for all things football. Wow, you will not see a better goal. BBC Sounds has got you covered. These fans have gone absolutely wild. More live Premier League football than anywhere else on Five Live. And there is the whistle and a brand new season begins. And the Football Daily Podcast. Everything football, every day. For all the Premier League action and reaction, listen on BBC Sounds. BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts. Hello, I'm Phil Goodlad and this is the Scottish Football Podcast, keeping you up to date with all the news, all the views and all the analysis you need from our beautiful game. It's Tuesday the 3rd of September already. Where is the season going away from us today? But we're talking tactics. We had Henry Glasson up front in my team. I wasn't wanting Rob Douglas to be sitting with a ball at his feet and 60,000 fans wouldn't be wanting that. Jackie McNamara's not a fan, but why are modern keepers expected to be better with the ball at their feet? And just how big an advantage does building the play from your goalie give a team? Also, speaking of tactics... He's a creative player. He's slightly different to the type of player that we've got. It'll be nice to have a look at him up close and personal. I think I've touched on it before, the championships in the summer, that maybe we'd freshen a little bit going into this campaign. Could we about to see a different approach being taken by Steve Clark in Scotland? And There's a new batch of players coming in, sort of a different feel to the squad, and uh, hopefully it'll re-energise all of us individually and hopefully everyone in the country as well. We'll have the latest from the national team camp as we look ahead to Thursday's Nations League opening. Tons to discuss. I'm delighted to say that joining us is Cami Bell, the former Scotland Kilmarnock and Rangers goalkeeper, and John Walker, a man who looks like a young Orson Welles, <laughs> but is a coach, an analyst, and host of the Scots Abroad podcast. John, please tell me I'm not the only person in your life to say you look like a young Orson Welles. Normally I get Ricky Gervais, so I'll take Orson Welles, mate. I think the hair changes the Ricky Gervais uh, look, does it not? Hey, Cammy, who better to speak to about goalkeeping tactics than a man that spent his uh, his career uh, in between the sticks? Um, I'm 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 always interested in how we try and reinvent the wheel in football, and and now we expect our our goalkeepers uh, to be as good with their feet as their hands. It just doesn't seem fair. Yeah, it's always challenging, Phil. Everything's evolving and. Certainly since I played, there was there was snippets of playing from the back with your feet, but nowadays it's expected to be as good with your feet as they are with your hands. So, yeah, huge uh, pressure on goalkeepers these days, but it'll be an interesting one to delve into. Yeah, and just be honest, you're glad that you're now not in between the sticks anymore and having to be as good with your feet as your hands. Oh, absolutely. Much better sitting in the stands criticising people than actually being <laughs> out there getting criticised. Yeah. Come and join the party. It's much better on this side, isn't it? Um, Listen, plenty to discuss. Uh, Before that, though, uh, let's get through the latest Scottish football headlines. Speaking ahead of the Nations League opener with Poland, John McGinn says the disappointment of Scotland's Euro 24 exit will never leave him. Shea Adams is reported to be out of the upcoming Nations League doubleheader, while uh, Dundee goalkeeper John John McCracken has been called up replaced the injured Robbie McCrory. It's being reported that out of contract Stuart Armstrong has been offered a deal with Vancouver Whitecaps. If it goes through, it would see him join up with his former Dundee United team at Ryan Gold in Canada. Hib Sporting Director Marky Mackay has revealed that the East Road Club were prepared to pay a million pounds for Luke McCowan before Celtic gazumped them for the former Dundee midfielder's signature. And UEFA has lowered the price caps for away fans at Europe's two mains club competitions this season. Champions League games will have an upper limit of 60 euros, the Europa League 40 euros, while a ticket in the Conference League will be just 20 euros. Uh, let's start very briefly with your thoughts on a couple of those headlines uh, then. Uh, John Walker, Stuart Armstrong to Vancouver White Caps. Is it a move that makes sense for you? Yeah, I, I, Vancouver have really struggled to get beyond the first round of the playoffs. And I think actually the way they play is really heavily reliant on Ryan Gold just now. Um, when Ryan Gold's out, the results seem to dip. 
I think if you add Stuart Armstrong to that 3 4 3 formation, there's another one of those playmakers. Vancouver probably become the favourites for me um, up in Miami. So that's a really exciting one. It's, it's one that I've only just heard about. Um, and it's one that I'd be excited to follow because I think Stuart Armstrong is an absolute cracking footballer. Um, I think he'd go somewhere we'd be super appreciated. Um, and I think from, from knowing what Ryan Gold's experienced, it would be, it'd be a not bad lifestyle over in Vancouver. Mm. Hey, for your podcast, The Scots Abroad, you obviously know very well how Scottish footballers are viewed in certain quarters. Stuart Armstrong has always struck me as somebody in the last few years as maybe maybe a player that we don't view as as present. Does that make sense? Like he's he's almost been a bit part in Scotland squads coming on. And um, for Vancouver to be looking at him and to be effectively giving him the chance uh, at the later stage of his career. How how much would a Stuart Armstrong be viewed as as somebody that can come into a club and not just make an impact on the park, but also make an impact off it as well? The, the disparity in levels in the MLS is huge. Like uh, people have watched enough clips to realise that from the from the best to the worst, there's a huge gap within even within teams. Like Ryan Gold's a standout player, and there's players in that team that just aren't that wouldn't make it in Scottish Scottish League football. Um, Stuart Armstrong would go into that team and be one of the best players in the league. Just for what Stuart Armstrong is good at, because the league's very technical, it's very athletic. Those are two things that Stuart Armstrong, uh, Stuart Armstrong has in abundance. He's, he's a very good footballer. He would walk into that league and be a, a really impressive footballer. And they would be expecting that as well, because they've seen Lewis Morgan, they've seen Ryan Gold come into the leagues, and Gary, even Gary McKay, Stephen to a lesser extent, because he was injured a wee bit. They were all standout players. Uh, Cammy, John McCracken, uh, first Dundee player in 20 years to be called in to the Scotland squad. Uh, is it a call-up that's well-deserved? Yeah, I think it is, Phil. I think John McCracken's had a really good season last season, certainly. Um, he started this season well, and he, he's playing in a strong Dundee team as well. So, yeah, there's loads of factors of why he's got into the squad, but he's got to. you've got to say he's deserved it as well. Yes, I know there's a number of injuries with regards to Robbie McCrory, Again, Robbie's not played that much this season either when he has been fit. Um, and Liam Kelly's obviously moved on to be a number two at Rangers. So there's factors in it, but I think John de- certainly deserves it. And he's, he's a very good goalkeeper as well. Post-Euros, do you think that the number one jersey is up for grabs for Scotland? And if so, does John McCracken, if he does well in the squad, will he have his eye on in the next two years making that jersey his? I think long term he potentially might have his eye on it. At the moment, I don't think the jersey's up for grabs. I, I really don't. I think Angus Gunn's the one that Steve Clark will stick to um, when he's in charge. Um, and yeah, I don't see it's not like the competition we've had over the years where we've had the likes of Craig Gordon, Alan McGregor, and David Marshall being the three goalkeepers in our squad. That was when it was phenomenal competition. I feel as if there's a gap at the moment. Um, and again, it's pro- potentially a little bit worrying for Scotland fans going forward of who is the, going to be the next goalkeeper for the, the next 10, 15 years. Um, because again, John McCracken, yeah, he's 26 now, so he's at an age that he'll, he will want to try and push his way into a starting and getting a, getting a cap. It's going to be difficult, though, I, I think, at the moment, Phil. Uh, listen, I want to get the whiteboard out. I I, I love this, and it, 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 it's almost like it's it's a bit of a pub bore conversation. This when it comes to tactics, but because I think I know what I think I would like to do, I'm I'm interested in both of you telling me, Phil, you've never played the game at any level. You certainly don't know anything about tactics, so you're going to dispel all the myths that I have. And this is the one that gets me most. A goalkeeper surely is just there to save, to save shots and, and, and to start the flow of an attack. I don't need him to be doing things that an outfield player would do. I just need him to give the ball to somebody that can then make that happen. John Walker, you spend your life discussing and analysing tactics. So put me in my place. Tell me I'm wrong and we can quickly move on. A goalkeeper is there to stop shots. He's not there to start attacks, is he? I mean, if he's not going to shot, stop and shots, he's not going to get a game at elite level. So that is his first and foremost. Um, but I think probably we're, we're about 15 years down the line from realising the trend that was changing. And I think a lot of it did start with Spain and Pep Guardiola. 
then on from eight, nine year olds were starting to get taught to be involved in the boxes and training. And um, their technical passing to players, 20 yards, 30 yard passing was going to be important. So I think all we're seeing now is all those keepers that were getting those training are now landing at 22, 23, 24. And all those coaches that have fell out of that have understood that was the trend that was that was going forward. So everything's kind of led to this. And keep it simple, the idea of this is to effectively create an 11th outfield player. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're, if you're a team building out from the back, the one image that you will always want to see is a centre-forward pressure goalkeeper because it then means there's two spare outfield players. Even if you then want to go long, what you're increasing is the odds of your midfielders picking up a second ball. And I think that's probably the bit that's mistaken. And it's something that Airdrie do really well. As they last season, especially with Joshua Ray, they'll go back to their goalkeeper to invite a press off, a, off maybe four or five players. And they'll still go long to Todorov so that it breaks in the middle of the park and you've got a higher advantage to pick up a second ball. So it's not always to like play like Barcelona and have 30 passes before you score a goal. Because what Cami will have experienced is anytime he's taken a goal kick, everyone got up into a 20 yard gap we'll hit there and we'll play from there. But you have a real low odd of that second ball falling to your player. Add the country we play in, wind, rain, everything in between. Your odds of finding somebody or it breaking to your team lower and lower and lower. So what you've seen is the distance of keepers kicking come down, but the accuracy go right up. And that is because even when they go long, they increase the chance to pick it up. And it's something that Rangers do, by the way. I know a lot of people go on about Clermont and a lack of style of play. Rangers style of play is to try and provoke a press, play up to Dessers and win the second ball. And it's something they actually do quite well. It's just not pretty to watch and nobody likes seeing it. Well, well, since when did that ever stop in Scottish football? It's not pretty to watch. Nobody likes it, but hey, let's carry it. Cammy, be honest, as a goalkeeper, what what's your view the first time a coach said, have you, have you ever thought about practising your passing? Uh, no, listen, Phil, I've been there actually back in, I think it was possibly 2011, uh, under Mixu Pat Line and at Kilmarnock. Mixu came in with a certain style and it was quite new to Scottish football. Not a lot of teams were trying to pass from the back at that point. He wanted to pass from the back. He told me firmly that I wasn't allowed to kick the ball over the halfway line. So that was, again, it has evolved a little bit since then, but he just wanted to play up from the back. Uh, it took us a long time um, to get it right. We eventually did, and it was very, very good. It was good to watch. It was a new style in Scottish football. Not a lot of teams were playing from the back. Obviously, the game's evolved since then as well. And we had, we had one player who, again, was brilliant for me as from a goalkeeper's point of view, was Alexei Eremenko at that point, who wanted to take the ball at any position. Uh, we'd take, a, take the ball with a man up his back, and we'd still continue to keep uh, possession. So you need to have good footballers, first and foremost, in your team. But again, it has evolved, obviously, the new rules came in as well since then, where obviously from a goal kick, defenders can, your own team can be in your box. So that's evolved the game and that's evolved the way that goalkeepers have to play from the back. Um, but I think there's a number of elements when you look at goalkeepers playing. It, it can be to start attacks, it can be to retain possession. Teams always go back to their goalkeeper, again, when they're wanting to control games. Because if they've got long periods of possession, then they're ultimately controlling the speed of the game. So, yeah, I think it's so important for goalkeepers um, to be comfortable with their feet in this day and age. Cammy, I, I've, I've been calling on the bosses at the BBC for months now to create a Scottish football podcast after hours edition where, where you can maybe speak a little more freely with a little more fruity language. And I'm just wondering what your reaction was when Mixu Patlinen said, Cammy, I don't want you kicking the ball over the halfway line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that would need to be in that edition, Phil. Uh, <laughs> no, listen, it, it was one of them ones that when it first came out, and, and Mixu just didn't throw this idea out there. We worked on it daily, every single day, whether it be a recovery day. I remember recovery days where I've had recovery days where you go out and you just have a walk and a jog and a stretch, and the boys that have played the day before will go back inside. Mixu had us in a shape playing the ball up from the goalkeeper, and that was your recovery. You were actually getting patterns of play, so... He really did think about it. It wasn't just one of them ones who said, I want you to play from the back, on you go. We worked on it religiously. So again, when you do that, you become comfortable and it eventually clicked for us. I remember being at Tynecast, I think we beat Hearts 3-0 that day. Um, and, and that's when it clicked for us and we continued that season, had a really good season. So yeah, it can work, but you need to have good players as well. That's what I said. We had, we had a couple of really key players. Alexei Eremenko at that time, Craig Bryson was another one two top midfielders who were willing to take the ball at all times. 
John, I can just imagine the mailbag and emails starting to come in for dinosaur good lad with, with this question that I'm about to, to give to you. But you mentioned before about the press and how by playing the, the ball back to the goalkeeper, you're effectively inviting the press from the opponents to come on you. Surely the way to, to counteract that if you're the opponent's side is just not to press at all. In a COVID world with no fans in the stadium, that might work. But if I'm sat in the stadium and Casper Schmeichel is rolling the ball and walking up and coming out of his box and keeping coming and keeping coming, because that's what's going to happen, that's what Ederson will do, at some point we are going to scream at our centre forward to go and shut the goalie down. And then it's, it's going to happen, whether it happens inside your box, whether the goalie rolls it out. You see Ederson come 25, 30, 35 yards as high as that to go. You need to come at some point. You can't just stand in there. At some point, you have to go and engage the ball. That's the issue, as fans will then encourage you to go do it. So the, the thing I don't like, as I think I've seen a few times in the old firm on Sunday, is Dessers goes and does it, and Rangers get played round, and McGregor has the lay of the land. And that's actually where Celtic's offside goal comes from. It comes from about four passes off the back of Schmeichel. If you don't press the goalie, I mean, for, for me, if I'm ever if I'm coaching academy football, my dream is always that somebody presses the goalie because we're going long to a striker and playing off second ball, or we're playing through wherever the gap is. It's as simple as that. And and, and do, do you think that Celtic on Sunday and other teams will have planned for that? Will have planned for a Dessers type striker to be the one that breaks and and tries and presses? Castro Schmeichel's used to this. Castro Schmeichel's. The, an elite goalkeeper and he's always used his feet Le- Leicester tried to play football under Brendan Rodgers they played a bit of football under Ranieri he was always good with his feet um, he's good at his feet at Denmark he's more than comfortable getting a striker three, four yards away from him before he pops the ball off so he's he's good with that he understands that he knows where the gaps are when that happens but Cammy's nail on the head Scales and Carter Vickers always want the ball McGregor always wants the ball Bernardo always wants the ball as long as you get people that always are willing to take the ball running towards goal at full speed you're going to take teams apart. If Pep Guardiola started this, and it's been, what, 10, 15 years that we've actually seen goalkeepers now being an integral 11th man outfield, um, what are you seeing around the world, John, for the next, if you like, the next fashion of of press, but also of using goalkeeper? I mean, is this here to stay, or will somebody revolutionise goalkeeping and say, I'll tell you what, you just save goals and don't worry about passing the ball. I think you're actually seeing it already change within the realm of goalkeepers playing out for the back. So what you're now seeing is where goalkeepers normally would have been the, the middle centre half and a back three as a sweeper. You're actually now seeing sometimes with John Stones and the likes, the right centre half or left centre half move into defensive midfield and the goalkeepers stand up in a back four. So there's nobody in goal, 25 yards for goal, and it looks insane. But what you're really doing is then pushing a fourth player into midfield against a three. You've, if you're comfortable to play, you're going to find that overload. You're going to get in there. So I think what you're going to see is goalkeepers become even more braver and even more involved to the point that they join a back line and you don't have a goalkeeper in your box. You have goalkeepers outside your box on a flat four and they actually try and build out like that. So I think uh, old-fashioned people that want their goalkeeper on the sticks are going to have a few more heart attacks coming up. Uh, Cammy, I, I bet you're just delighted that you're out of it now, that you don't have to to pretend one moment to be a goalkeeper and the next minute to be a centre-half and the next minute to be a sweeper. I mean, it, just, it all just seems so so convoluted. Yeah, listen, it's uh, it's crazy times. And as John says, you can see <laughs> that, that pattern coming, that um, the goalkeeper's going to be basically a centre-half. And there's huge risks with that. There absolutely is. But again, if your team's that comfortable in possession and don't give away possession very often... Then, then the stats have got to uh, play in your favour. So, yeah, it's so important that obviously goalkeepers are work from such a young, young age now and it, they'll, they'll work as much with their feet as they will with their hands in training sessions nowadays. I've seen it. Um, so that that's the important thing, that the goalkeepers from a young age should be coming through as comfortable with their feet as they are, as they are with their hands. Finally, Scotland face Poland at Hamden on Thursday in their opening Nations League match. We'll talk about the approach Scotland might take in a moment. Uh, first up, John McGinn has faced the media. Here's a little bit of what he's had to say. We've come a long way as a nation to qualify for these tournaments. We didn't want that to just be enough. We all know we could have done better in the summer, but now there's a there's a new batch of players coming in, sort of a different feel to the squad, and uh, hopefully it'll re-energise all of us individually and hopefully everyone in the country as well. 
we've got a couple of years now to try and get to a World Cup, but Thursday it's about us getting on the front foot, embracing being in the top division in the Nations League, which is a, a first for us. We're going to be tested absolutely against some top teams and give us the best possible chance to be at that World Cup. So as for the performances in major tournaments, we've got a lot of time to digest that, a lot of time to look back, reflect on what it went what went wrong, what we can do better. But hopefully in two years' time we're talking about how we can do better at the, the World Cup and, and be in that next major tournament. And unfortunately for us that's all we can do at the minute. Do you think the, the, the hurt and the, the disappointment of the summer has now been parked or, or do you think actually that, that could in a funny way play a part in this tournament to kind of instill a, a bit more kind of um, you know we'll, we'll, we'll try and put the, the wrongs right kind of idea I will think um, you, you definitely don't part them I still think about getting relegated with St Mirren what I could have changed what, what you could do better these things never leave you uh, everyone always says the highs in football make the lows worth it but they're, they're lying uh, so it'll always be in the back of your head things you, you could have done differently both together as a team and individually so we kind of change that now it's about looking forward the Scottish Football Podcast from BBC Sports Scotland. John McGinn there. The other voice you heard was our very own Jane Lewis. Uh, some thinking we could see a, a slight shift, a slight tweak in terms of tactics from Steve Clark after the the disappointment of the Euros uh, this summer. John Walker, is that something that you can see perhaps in the offing for Thursday night at Hamden? Just on the basis of the squad, you're not bringing Ryan Gold, James Forrest, Lewis Morgan, Ben Doak into a squad to play one up front, uh, play four box midfielders. You're looking to actually have wide men on the pitch. So I'm imagining it's going to be a 4 2 3 one 4 3 3 because we've got four wingers there and we've only brought four centre-halves. So I think the back five is probably dead for this camp and there's probably going to be something different um, to, to be used. And it's it's one of the areas I know we're talking about right now is Angus Gunn's got a new coach. This guy came from Norgeland, very, very big playing style background. Angus Gunn's one of those ones. That was one I wanted to flag up. His passing percentage is up 13%. So he's somebody that's getting better distribution wise. So we might actually see Scotland having to use him to build out because we no longer have the back three protection. So I think it'll be 4 3 3. I think we'll see maybe a bit more a bit more of a pleasing football and style that fans seem to want. Cammy, hmm. do you see Steve Clark as a manager that can can adapt to to a change as John is speaking about? I know in the past that we've seen him make a formation that Scotland can play all their best players in when you think about the uh, the the Robertson and Tierney conundrum, but a four three three with an Angus gun almost playing as an eleventh outfield player? I think Steve Clark needs to adapt uh, going forward, certainly after a disappointment of, of the Euros and again, just lack of competitiveness uh, certainly from Scotland's point of view in the games um, I, I, I agree with John that the, you look at the squad, you need to use the players that are there you need to use them in positions they're comfortable with as well and I think that's key that we're not putting players in positions that they're not comfortable with because when we do that then we, we create our own problem We've got good players in that squad. We just need to find that right formula. I think I agree with John. It's probably going to be. I would like to see a four-three-three, um, a real attacking style, and and having a go at teams because I think we've got so many players in our squad that we can hurt teams. We really can. Um, but sometimes I think that negativity sets in, and we we almost try and just make sure that we 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 don't get beat a little bit. And there's there's that flat flatness about the team. So. Yeah, I would love to see, again, guys like Ben Doak, Morgan on the pitch, being aggressive, being um, what they are. Guys that want to go forward and hurt teams and, and create opportunities to score goals. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that's going to change, um, but we'll wait and see. Just finally, Cammy, you've been involved in setups throughout the levels in Scottish football. How important is it for our game to get something by way of a positive result on Thursday, given the disappointment that we had in the Euros? Because you mentioned the negativity there. Negativity is something that can very easily start to build and get out of control. How important is it to, in effect, put a full stop on what we saw at the Euros and now start to move on? Massively, massively important. I think Thursday night is really, really important for the national game. And and again, we're all very passionate about um, Scotland. We want them to do well. Of course we do. I think it was just from the Euros, there's been that hangover. And again, I, I think a little bit of that is because Steve Clark's not came out and spoken until this week. 
Um, I felt as if he should have came out and just put it to bed. They've tried to put it to bed this week, but there's always going to be questions lingering about from the, the journalists wanting to know answers from the Euro because they haven't been answered. So, yeah, it, it's, it's really, really important we get a positive performance, a positive result. Um, and just, yeah, I, I, want, I want to see some attack in football from Scotland because, as I said before, we do have the players to do that as well. Cammy Bell, John Walker, thank you very much indeed for joining me on the uh, latest Scottish Football Daily podcast. And remember, we're here every weekday morning, bright and early, with a new episode of the Scottish Football podcast. And make sure you never miss out. So just follow and subscribe wherever you listen. Uh, for now, though, there'll be plenty more build up to the Scotland game uh, tomorrow. Um, but I'm Phil Goodlad. Enjoy your beautiful game, and we'll speak again soon. This is the shocking moment English football has been dreading. My name is Moses Swaybu, and I used to be a professional footballer. But then I got in deep with organised crime and became a match fixer operating in the English league. A match fixing investigator has highlighted two matches he says appear to have suspicious betting patterns. How honest are you going to be with me? This is 100%. Join me for Sports Strangers Crimes Presents Confessions of a Match Fixer. Listen on BBC Sounds.